So in the um, decomposition of the elliptic genus of K3, we encountered an object which I said was a mock modular form. And um, I should define what that is. Now, there's a very um, interesting and colorful history, uh, which I'm not going to tell you about, but you can read about in various places. Uh, these objects were invented by uh, Ramanujan in the last year of his life and described in a letter that he wrote to Hardy. Um, but he didn't define them. He just wrote down examples. And it took mathematicians a long time to figure out what he was doing and, and a more uh, you know, rigorous mathematical framework for them. Um, and I'll be telling you about the results of some of that investigation. Um, although I've talked to mathematicians who claim that the correct definition is not yet understood, that there, you know, it's not, there should be something better. But anyway, I can tell you what there is. So let me just, I, I, I think earlier on I should have defined a modular form. I kind of assumed it was something that you knew. But just to make sure that we both, uh, that we're all on the same page, a modular form of weight k is a holomorphic function from the upper half plane, the complex numbers, which obeys this modular transformation property. And um, we sometimes weaken this and or or you know vary this in various ways. So we sometimes uh, talk about weakly holomorphic modular forms. That means that when we look at f tau, f of tau, and write a Q expansion for it, we allow some negative powers of Q. So we might have a sum here that starts at n greater than some minus n. These are called weakly holomorphic. And the other thing that we can do here is we could insert some rho here, which is either a phase or if we want to look at, uh, it could be a matrix if we're looking at vector valued modular forms. A matrix meaning that we have some you know, matrix that depends on an element of SL2Z, gives us some representation of that, which mixes the components of F. So th these are natural generalizations that occur um, in conformal field theory. All right, so what is a mock modular form? <clears throat> well, there are various ways to define it, but here's one way. You start with an object which is kind of like a modular form, but different. So you start with something that's called a weight k harmonic mass form. I'm not sure if it's mass or moss, but anyway, it's M-A-A-S-S, -S, which is the name of a mathematician. And a weight k harmonic mass form is a function not necessarily holomorphic from the upper half plane to the complex numbers such that it transforms under modular transformations like a modular form perhaps with some phase, some multiplier system, or you could consider vector value generalizations, but <clears throat> I won't worry about those subtleties right now. And it obeys the equation that the weight k Laplacian, y to the 2 minus k, d by d tau, y to the k d by d tau bar is equal to 0 on f. So here the weight k Laplacian is just the Laplacian acting on k forms on the upper half plane. We 
write tau as x plus i y, then we use the usual metric that has constant negative curvature on the upper half plane, and delta k is the associated weight k Laplacian. So you could think of this as, um, suppose you were doing quantum mechanics, but instead of doing quantum mechanics on the line or the plane with the flat metric, you were doing quantum mechanics on the upper half plane. If you're doing quantum mechanics on the upper half plane and you didn't have a potential, then the eigenfunctions would be um, solutions to the Laplacian, and these would be like zero energy states in quantum mechanics. So that's kind of, you know, you could think of them sort of like that. So, um, so the mass form means it's an eigenvalue of the weight k Laplacian. The weight k means it transforms like a weight k modular form. And harmonic means that it has eigenvalue zero under the weight k Laplacian. I'll let mk hat denote the space of weight k harmonic mass forms. So now, we also consider the space mk with a little bang there, which is the space of weakly holomorphic weight k modular forms. All right, so now what we're going to do is given one of these weight k harmonic mass forms, I haven't told you how to find them yet, but if we have one of these things, we're going to construct a mock modular form. So what we do is if we have one of these harmonic mass forms, we define a map called the shadow map by S of F hat is equal Y to the K D F hat by D tau bar. And then we take the complex conjugate of that quantity. Yeah. What kind of object? A K form. A K form. All right. So, um, now let's notice that if f hat happens to be a weight k modular form, weakly holomorphic, then s on this gives zero because if f hat is weakly holomorphic, then d by d tau bar of it vanishes, and so uh, the shadow map kills it. And if, as uh, true in the examples related to moonshine that I'll discuss, um, the uh, effect, uh, the image of this shadow map vanishes as we go off to uh, I infinity, then you can invert the shadow map. Very explicitly. Um, so in other words, if you have some, um, oh, I forgot to mention something over here.
it follows um, from the fact that F hat obeys the, uh, is, is annihilated by the weight Kalo Laplacian, and this formula that S of F hat is actually a weight two minus K modular form. So the fact that um, this is holomorphic follows from the fact that it's annihilated by this weight K modular form, because this part of it is basically just the shadow map up to a complex con conjugation. And um, using the transformation properties of this derivative in y to the k, you can check that this has weight 2 minus k if f hat has weight k. So this produces a weight 2 minus k modular form. And um, if you have one of these uh, harmonic mass forms, then you can invert the shadow map by doing an integral. And I'll, there's a proportionality constant here, which I won't worry about. And there's some annoying business here, which has to do with the fact that you complex conjugate here. You don't, you could reformulate everything without doing this, but then you would get modular forms that were anti-holomorphic, which are not sort of as natural. I mean, they're perfectly natural, but they're not what mathematicians are used to. So because of this complex conjugation, there's some funny business here where you have to complex conjugate the, ar the argument, put a minus sign, and then complex conjugate the whole thing. But if you simply act on this integral with the shadow map, you will see that you get g back if you put, choose the proportionality constant correctly. And so this inverts the map. That is, if you have a g star here, the shadow map gives you g. You can invert this to extract g star in terms of g. Weakly holomorphic means you're allowed to have a finite number of terms that have negative powers of q. All right, so it takes a few lines of computation, but you can check using the statements that I've given you that you now have the following nice situation. If you have one of these weak uh, harmonic mass forms, and the shadow map gives you a g, which is weight 2 minus k modular form, then the difference between f hat and g star is holomorphic. Because if I take d by d tau bar on it up to a factor of y to the k, that's just the shadow map. And from this, these two terms cancel out. So this is holomorphic. f hat is f plus g star. And this is modular, meaning it transforms like a weight k modular form. But it is not holomorphic unless g is equal to 0. f is holomorphic, but it's not modular. So this is a situation that's kind of like the holomorphic <clears throat> anomaly in supersymmetric gauge theories. There's a tension between two things you would like to be true. We're used to dealing with holomorphic functions, and that often arises as a condition of supersymmetry or you know, in modular forms because we, like in the elliptic genus, we've canceled out the, the Q bar dependence by having some ground state condition. And you would like things to be modular, 
But in this situation, you can't have both. You either have something that's holomorphic and not modular, or modular but not holomorphic, whenever this uh, shadow, G, is non-zero. Um, yeah, I mean, this is an inverse, but it's not a unique inverse. So, yeah. I, I, yeah. Um, no, it's 2 minus k. Thanks. Okay, so um, the pair F and G is called a Mach modular form and its shadow. And F hat is called the completion of F. So in this description, F is sort of the holomorphic part of a harmonic mass form. So this gives you kind of an abstract definition. And you could then say, well, all right, how do you actually construct these things? What are examples of them? Well, so the first example is that a modular form is a Mach modular form with zero shadow. And so, okay, good. So it's a generalization of the notion of a modular form. Um, if the shadow is zero, then um, there's no problem. It's, you know, you have something that's already holomorphic. Now, this is not entirely trivial. So, for example, J of tau that, sh that showed up in Monstrous Moonshine is a weight zero modular form. You might ask yourself, why couldn't, it, why couldn't we have had a, a Mach modular form? I mean, could, we, could there be some kind of moonshine where there's a Mach modular form? Well, because the upper half plane mod SL2Z is genus zero, it tells us that there are no weight two modular forms. If there were weight two modular forms, they could be the shadow of something that's weight zero, and there could be weight zero Mach modular forms. But because the space of weight two modular forms vanishes, J has to be modular. So this kind of... Um, Reasoning can be extended in other situations where um, the genus zero property is kind of connected to modularity or mock modularity. When the space of some forms that could be shadows vanishes, then you uh, are sort of forced to land on modular forms. Now, a second example, which is slightly less trivial, but not too much less trivial, is to look at uh, Eisenstein series. So it's a famous fact that when 2K is even and K is greater than 1, this 
uh, defines a weight um, 2K modular form. And um, on the other hand, G2 is not convergent, or not absolutely convergent. And showing that it's a modular form involves rearranging terms in the sum, which you're not allowed to do if, if it's not absolutely convergent. So it's a fairly famous fact that you can, you can choose a particular way of ordering this series where you now define G2 be the sum um, over n squared plus a sum m not equal to zero, sum on n, one over m tau plus n squared. And this quantity g2 hat transforms like a weight to modular form, but it's not um, holomorphic because of this term involving the one over m tau. And so G2 hat is a mock modular form with constant shadow. So, um, that's a definition, and it would now be nice to discuss in detail how to construct other examples, but um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to tell you that you can show that this quantity H2 of tau which exhibits this connection to M24, which is still somewhat mysterious, is a weight one-half Mach modular form, shadow 24 times eta cubed of tau. Notice that this is weight three halves. So this is indeed an example where this guy um, is weight a half. This is weight uh, two minus k. Two minus a half is three halves. And um, you can also show that when you look at this Mackay Thompson series, that the twisted versions are also mock modular forms. And you do that by showing that for each G in M24 and with chi of G being the character of G in well, M24 has a 23-dimensional representation and a one-dimensional representation, so there's a 24-dimensional reducible representation. Let chi of g be the character of g in that representation. Then you can show that these twisted versions are given by chi of g over 24 times h2 of tau minus tg of tau, where tg of tau is a weight to modular form for gamma naught of n. And in the simplest cases, n is the order of g. In 
slightly more complicated cases, it's something a little more complicated than that. But this part is modular. This part is mock modular because H2 is mock modular unless chi of g is equal to zero. And chi of g is equal to zero for some classes. And then H2 of g is actually modular and not mock modular. So the papers that I described earlier, who looked at the twined versions of this, showed that there is a decomposition of these terms into representations, which preserves the mock modularity in this sense that the twine guys are still mock modular forms when chi of g is non-zero. They're modular when chi of g is zero by explicitly constructing these TG of taus for all conjugacy classes of the monster. So that's the question that you asked uh, earlier. Yeah, there is a characterization in terms of um, in terms of um, I think in terms of their decomposition with respect to M23 or something like that, but I forget exactly what the statement is. All right, so you can see that the, story, the moonshine story here is more obscure because we don't have an explicit conformal field theory exhibiting the symmetry. It's mathematically more complicated because it involves these mock modular forms rather than modular forms. And while you can manipulate them sort of like modular forms now, they're, you know, they're a little more complicated to deal with. And so the question is, can we somehow use this mathematical formulation or something involving K3 to understand what's going on? And in trying to do that, um, it's natural to either think like a physicist or to think like a mathematician. Sorry? No, I mean, there is no genus zero. These guys are weight, these guys are not weight zero, they're weight, um, they're weight two. So. Uh, no, if you set G equal identity, this vanishes and uh, chi of G is 24 because it's a 24 dimensional representation. And you're just looking at the character of the identity and you just recover H2. There is a genus, there is a genus zero property here. But to describe it, um, I think I need to discuss the extension to umbral moonshine. Because it's a little more visible in that broader context. So, uh, well, maybe by physicist here, what I really mean is string theorist. So, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Not really, because when you look at this, uh, when you look at H2, All right, I'm just making something up. <laughs> I didn't actually remember that. These guys, you look at them and you go, all right, there's a 45 dimensional ear rep, there's a 231, there's a 770. It's sort of obvious what to do. But when you get to something like this, it's not obvious what to do. There are a finite number of 
irreducible representations. And you can probably write this number as a sum of irreducible representations with positive coefficients in you know, 35 different ways. Which way are you supposed to write it? You don't know. And each way of writing it will give you a different twined guy. So um, you can't predict in advance what you're going to get. All you can do is you can look at the first so many terms. You can try to match it with something that has mock modular properties. And then you can use that to predict what the higher order terms should be in terms of the higher order terms in that Q expansion. Right. Right. Just, isn't just that enough to tell you? No, in general, you won't get something that's modular at all. I, I mean, suppose I looked at J of tau, and instead of 196883, you know, being a, that representation of the monster, it was 196883 times the identity, but I used some other decomposition for higher guys. You know, when you twined it, you would just get something that was not modular at all. But it didn't come from a torus partition function. It came from taking the elliptic genus and doing this weird decomposition, throwing away the massless characters, keeping the massive. Well, I agree. If you can identify a Hilbert space of states that these numbers are counting positive multiplicities, and that is connected with the conformal field theory, then yes. But we don't have that. But it's, I don't, I mean, the partition function should be weight zero. This is weight a half. And it's not even modular, it's mock modular. So, <laughs> I, I really don't know how to answer your question. Why is that an inconsistency? What? Why isn't what an inconsistency? I don't understand. No, I don't understand. Go, go ahead. Well, you know, I, I, well, so the question was, suppose you had, you had a Hilbert, as, as in, suppose there was some conformal field theory right. that did represent Hilbert. Right. Um, that in itself tell you what the transformation of the modularity Yes. Yeah. If I had such a situation. So, Exactly. So if I had a conformal field theory, and I'm computing an insertion of G, this looks like this. Now, we know that when we take uh, uh, you know, we, if, if we do modular transformations, this goes to some uh, G to some power, G to some power, and I can ask what transformations leave that fixed. And I believe the answer is that if you look at gamma naught of n, where n is the order of g, then uh, g1 goes to g1. And so that, um, this should be a modular form for gamma naught of n, if we had a conformal field theory. And we had the partition function of it. But we don't. We don't. <laughs> so, we can't, so we can't conclude I mean, it's not, well, yeah, it's not modular, it's mock modular. So we, I mean, it's, it's true, it's, I mean, it's even, so it's, it's true that there are these H2 of Gs, and even worse, there are H2s of Gs and H, where H and G are commuting pairs of elements in, the, in M24 that you can define, just like you'd expect to be able to define twisted and twine guys in a conformal field theory. But the construction of these is all purely through manipulating mock modular forms and not through CFT constructions, which is why it suggests that there's some CFT way of understanding it, but nobody knows what that is yet. So I mean, I'm sympathetic to the desire you're expressing, but I don't, you know. So, uh, all 
All right, so um, I still have half an hour, right? Is that right? What time do I still? Yeah, okay. 25 minutes. Okay. Well, I can't possibly say that much, but um, if you, I think the most natural thing to think is since we found evidence for M24 in the elliptic genus of K3, we should look at the elliptic genus for X being some other calabi yau manifolds. And it might actually be more natural to look at, uh, you know, two n-folds, so things that um, have some hypercalar structure, so that we have an n equals four. But as far as I know, that doesn't seem to lead to interesting generalizations where you find evidence for some other kind of group. But if you think more just mathematically, you could ask, can we generalize the quantity phi zero one, which appears in the elliptic genus of K3, and not worry whether this generalization is connected to the elliptic genus of something, but just whether mathematically it gives something that generalizes this um, construction. And the answer is yes. And um, so this is work done with um, Randa Cheng and John Duncan and um, fired by and following some results uh, by Atish, Samir Murthy, and Don Zage, you can find the following structure, which was found somewhat experimentally. And then once we sort of recognize the pattern, um, you could see how everything fit together. So, for each x, which is the root lattice of a Niemeyer lattice that I discussed in the first lecture, so there are 23 of these. For each one, you can construct a whole bevy of mathematical objects. So first of all, you can construct LX, which is the Niemeyer lattice. To do this, you have to add in various weights um, in the weight lattice of corresponding to the root lattice, but you, there's a way of doing that. You can construct a pair hx and sx, which are vector valued Mach modular form and its shadow with m of x minus one components, where m of x is the Coxeter number of x. These exhibit moonshine in the same way that H2 did for M24 for a group GX, which is the automorphism group of the Niemeyer lattice divided by the Weyl group of X, generated by reflections in the roots. And for X equals A1 to the 24th, GX is M24. For X equals A2 to the 12th, which is another one of the root systems for Niemeyer lattice, GX is a, has a normal subgroup, and quotienting by that gives another Matthew group M12. Um, if x is equal to E8 cubed, dx is just the permutation group on three objects because you just permute the three copies of E8 
So you get sporadic groups, extensions of sporadic groups. Sometimes you get rather small groups in this pattern. And you can also construct gamma x and tx, which is a, a genus zero subgroup of um, SL2z and its help module. So here, the genus zero characterization is not so much in these Mackay Thompson series, but it's like each example that has a mock modular form and a group exhibiting moonshine for it is associated to a particular genus zero subgroup. And I haven't told you how to construct these yet, but they can be constructed from essentially the eigenvalues of the Coxeter element in terms of a ratio of eta functions. Now, I want to say just a few, I guess, what do I want to say? Um, it doesn't particularly, it's just you can do it. Um, so I want to say a couple more things about the nature of this construction, then I want to make some general comments. So um, to construct HX, you can use the same idea that we did in the elliptic genus. but you have to choose certain special weight zero and index m minus one Jacobi forms into n equals four characters. And these uh, n equals four characters are labeled as before, but now L goes from a half up to M minus one over two. So you get vector valued guys where R can go from one up to M minus one. And I'll just give you a couple of examples of what these Jacobi forms are. So if Fi equal to theta i of tau and z over theta i of tau for i equals two, three, and four. Then we saw that the elliptic genus of K3, after being corrected for a stupid mistake, was F2 squared plus F3 squared plus F4 squared. It turns out that this is the guy associated A1 to the 24. For A2 to the 12th, the corresponding form has weight zero and index two, and is given by four F2 squared, F3 squared, plus F3 squared, F4 squared, plus F4 squared, F2 squared. And for A3 to the eighth, this, and these all um, are chosen such that there is a condition
that tells you sort of what kind of negative powers of Q are allowed. And they tell you that Q to the 1 over 4m times hrx is always order 1. So you're never allowed to have anything more singular than Q to the minus 1 over 4m. And that strongly restricts the forms that are allowed here. And it can be viewed as really a growth condition on uh, the coefficients of the Jacobi form. Uh, a growth condition which was uh, in the DNZ paper. So there are a lot of details here, but I want to try to say something before I have to quit about what the general issues are and what, how people are trying to address them. So one of the main problems in trying to understand what's going on is that the construction of the mock modular forms, HX, or the Jacobi forms that they're built from, is not really connected to the construction of the group. But somehow, nonetheless, you can check that they exhibit moonshine for GX by explicitly constructing the Wind guys and verifying their mock modularity. So in other words, this group is determined by a Niemeyer lattice. The coefficients of these mock modular forms have nice decompositions into representations of that group. You can twine, you can get things that are mock modular, but it's not clear why this group is acting. It's just completely obscure. So, it's natural to try to find a connection between them. So one of the central problems is how do we connect the root system X or the Niemeyer lattice Lx to the group. There's a mysterious connection. So if you try to think about this from the point of view of conformal field theory, you ask yourself, well, X has an ADE classification. It's given by ADE components with total rank 24 and equal coxeter number. H of x is a mock modular form. Is there some framework that we know in conformal field theory that has an ADE classification and that involves mock modular forms? And mock modular forms occur, or things closely related to them, occur as the elliptic genus in non-compact conformal field theories. The most famous example which has been well studied is the cigar conformal field theory where you take SL2R mod U1 and the elliptic genus uh, of this theory was investigated by Troost and Ashok and Aguchi and Sugawara and what happens in a non-compact theory like this is you have the usual discrete states of a compact conformal field theory, but then at some point a continuum of scattering states comes in, just like in uh, quantum mechanics problems where you have both bound states and scattering states. And for the discrete states, you will get a contribution to the elliptic genus, which is holomorphic by the usual 
argument, but it's not modular because it doesn't include the full spectrum of the theory, and if you don't sum over the full spectrum, you don't expect to get something modular. If you compute the elliptic genus with the full spectrum, you get a z-elliptic which is modular, but it's not holomorphic because in a supersymmetric theory, while supersymmetry pairs energies, uh, bosons and fermions with the same energy, it doesn't require that you have the same spectral densities of fermions and bosons. And that difference in the spectral density when you integrate over the continuum ends up giving you a contribution to the elliptic genus which is not holomorphic. So you have this exactly the same tension that occurs um, in mock modular forms, and so it's natural to look for a non-compact conformal field theory that has some kind of ADE classification. And we know examples of that. Um, they have dual descriptions. And you can either think of a theory where you take five brains, which have an ADE classification, which is the ADE classification of the two zero theory, and you can wrap them on K3, or you could look at C2 mod G for G, a discrete subgroup of SU2, which is a local model for the kind of singularities that you can have in a K3 surface, which have an ADE classification. And you could use the um, Mackay correspondence between cyclic groups, dihedral subgroups, the orthogonal uh, tetrahedral group, uh, orthogonal octahedral group, and the icosahedral group, and uh, you know, a n, d n, or d two n, e six, e seven, and e eight. And these kinds of theories have been investigated by um, Samir Murthy and I, uh, Mezzaroglu, um, Cheng and Harrison, and recently by Aguchi and Sugoara. And you get results that are suggestive but so far not sort of on the nose. You can get things that have mock modular pro 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 properties. You can get various groups acting, but you don't so far get the umbral groups on the nose acting on the mock modular forms of umbral moonshine. So it may be that something along these lines works and it just has to be more refined, or it could be that this is sort of barking up the wrong tree and there's some other modification um, there also seem to be connections to three-dimensional gravity, which I'm not, I don't think, have time to explore or to discuss. But basically, there's a really interesting unsolved problem. There's a rich mathematical structure which generalizes the connection between K3 and M24. It involves mock modular forms, special groups, Niemeyer lattices, things that often occur in string theory. But no one has figured out how to put all the ingredients together to really explain what's going on. And, you know, I think if we figure out how to do that, we'll probably learn something interesting about string theory, maybe some new kind of construction, in the same way that monstrous moonshine really used an asymmetric orbifold construction before physicists knew what asymmetric orbifolds were. And if we'd really understood that deeply, we would have seen that there were interesting generalizations. So my hope is that we'll learn something interesting about 3D gravity or black holes or new constructions in formal field theory if we really figure out what's going on here. And I'm sorry that I haven't had the time to go into complete detail, but I've probably you know, been more technical than I should have been already. So I think I'll just end here and you know, ask if there are questions.